Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Welcome back everyone, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE and we're at EMC World 2015. I think this is the sixth year we've been at EMC World. We love coming to this show and got so much demand. We actually have two CUBEs. So uh, I'm excited for this next segment to really talk about a special program that EMC's been doing for a while. It's called the Women of the World. And we're joining this next segment by Bev Crer, VP and GM Data Center Storage from Intel. Welcome, first Thank time. You. And welcoming back Andrea Nelson for product marketing at Intel Thank from you. Portland, which we talked about. So, saw you about a year ago, first time for Beth, so yep. first off, welcome. Thank you so much. So, women of world, you guys are both in the program tomorrow, uh, so you get a little bit of a chance to give it a plug before, uh, before it actually happens. For people that don't know what it is, what is the Women of World program? So the EMC Women of the World program is an opportunity um, for women who are here at EMC World to get together, network, meet each other, you know, see what's going on. And um, I attended last year, and of course this year again. Um, we they have great speakers, usually um, folks from the outside coming in to talk about what's happening with women in technology. Right. And um, I'm really excited because this year I, I'm actually speaking on behalf of Intel, so right. um, I'm excited to do that as well. So what is what is your topic? You're on the panel. I think there's a panel of three, there's a panel, right? Right. Right. But what is your kind of uh, so the focus, area focus for this year's um, discussion is really about the science behind bias. Um, and the science behind diversity, and what we can do to actually understand that science and understand the science behind bias. And then, from my perspective, um, it's really about the practical applications of the ideas in, um, that, that we're learning about the science behind bias. Interesting. So. Can you share some uh, some of the stuff you're going to talk about tomorrow? What is some of the you science behind bias? You have to come to see us. I have to come to see you, right. So, <laughs> so where is it exactly for the people that still have an opportunity to show? It's um, it, it is the EMC Women of the World event. I'm actually not sure what room it's located okay. in, but it's it's certainly on the... It's um, in, I can check it out. It, Venetian Ballroom G. Uh, 12 to 2.30. That's right. That's Excellent. Right. That's right. So Andrea, uh, talk a little bit about Intel and Intel's role with diversity and, and, and why this is important to Intel. So Intel's made a commitment to reach diverse representation at all levels by 2020 and is making investments towards those ends. Um, we're working with partners across the, the industry to drive programs focused on building a diverse pipeline of, of candidates up and coming, programs like STEM, uh, Girls Who Code, Girls in Technology. Right. And EMC also has significant involvement in those programs. Right. So they're a critical partner with us as we move and forward. And we talked a little bit before we came on about you know why having diversity and incorporating a, a wider set of diversity actually leads to better decision making, mm -hmm. better product portfolios, you know, real fundamental good business thing. I wonder if you could dive into that a little bit. So, there's practical examples, but there's also the data, right? The data is really showing us that diverse organizations from the top down make better decisions. Diverse teams make better decisions, but diverse organizations, when we look at board participation, for instance, board boards that are diverse are 35% more effective, right? They get better ROI. That's a huge number. So as a company- so one more time, so boards- Boards that are, that diverse, are diverse have a 35% higher ROI. Wow. Right, so Catalyst data, it's a, it's a report that Catalyst okay. put out a number of years ago. So when you start taking a look at your own diversity data, you start to understand why. Here's a really silly example. It's not a silly example, it's a good example. Okay. Intel was developing the MICA. That's our, uh, our intelligent bracelet. Okay. And the team was really struggling to figure out how to power it because they didn't want to change the form factor. It was a closed form factor and they didn't want to change the form factor. A woman actually ended up being added to the team just because, right, she just joined the team. And, right. and they were struggling with this with this effort. She came in and she looked at them and she said, well, stop trying to plug something in. Why don't, she just used her own experience of taking her jewelry off at the end of the day and throwing it in a bowl on her dresser. She said, why not just power the bowl? And so the mica is actually powered by a bowl, <laughs> right? right, rather than a plug right. that would break the, the form factor. Right. And that's led us to other uses of that technology, like a power plate. Right. Right. So all different kinds of new ideas, just based on our own experience. Right. And it, it's just an interesting example that we all bring our own biases, we all bring our own point of view, we all bring our own experiences to everything that we do. The whole non-bias, no such thing, right? We all have a lifetime of experience that we apply, and such, that is a great example of just a simple little twist 
That right. never occurred to these guys because right. that's not how they take off their watches every right. night or whatever. Right. That's terrific. Um, so let's talk about um, a little bit about how things have changed because you know we do a lot of conferences and it seems like a lot of people have you know kind of women's tracks or women's networking events or maybe it's a it's an evening event. And uh, but you've been in the business for a little while, worked at some big companies, seen probably a lot of change. So I wonder if you could speak a little bit how the, the role of diversity and kind of the embracing of diversity has changed in technology, um, not just for women, but but diversity in general over these last. Uh, I don't know, a lot of few decades. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, I think that that um, the role of diversity and our understanding of how diverse teams are effective and how they can affect our products um, has definitely changed over the last uh, 30 years. Um, I think in the beginning it was just all about how do we do this, what are we doing and how do we do it, and we weren't really paying attention to diversity um, that much. I, I will say that that uh, I think I've gone back and forth in my own participation in women's organizations, right? In the beginning it was like, okay, why bother? And then it was, no, I really need to lean in. And then it was, uh, I don't have the time. And then it was leaning in. I think now what we're finding is that it's important for senior diverse leaders to actually reach out and, and grab and reach out and engage. Um, we call it pay it forward. Right, um, right. And, and we have a program that enables us to reach out and bring forward um, diverse team members to make sure that their voices are being heard and that their skills are being um, leveraged in our organizations. You know, in our industry, women actually buy uh, or make 89% of the consumer electronics decisions. 89%? 89% of the consumer electronics <laughs> division okay. decisions are either made or influenced, or influenced by women. By, okay. Right? Everything we spend, but the big screen, probably. <laughs> <laughs> we spend $55 billion on consumer electronics in comparison to men who only spend $41 billion. So if you're in the consumer electronics business, right. it actually behooves you to look at women as a, as, as a market, right? right? Mm -hmm. Very specifically. And I think that what we're going to find over time is that same kind of diverse thinking actually matters in making our products better. Right. So let's talk a little about where at EMC World and kind of the Intel EMC connection and how does that tie specifically into this initiative? Well, I think we talked about it earlier, Intel and EMC have a partnership obviously going back on architectural and product collaborations for about 20 years. Right. Um, this is a natural evolution as we try and move the industry forward and bring in more diversity towards collaboration on these types of, of programs, so. And this is what year? So you said that you were in uh, Women of the World last year. Do you know, right. yeah, because we had a few uh, ladies on last year as well, which was terrific. Um, former treasurer of the United States and uh, mm -hmm. Tina was on with the, crazy bioscience uh, stuff that she's working on. How many years has it been going on? I honestly don't know. I, I, I don't either. Three or Is that four. right? It's yeah. not that many. Okay, it's and, many. and um, again, it's tomorrow, May 6th, uh, Venetian Ballroom G, uh, noon to 2.30, so it should be a great program. Yep. Well, thanks for really. taking a few minutes to stop by theCUBE. Thank uh, you. Nice to meet you for Thank the first you. time. Andrew, great to have you back uh, again. Hopefully we'll see you again. All right, thank so you. So I'm Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE at EMC World 2015. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.